Bashar al-Assad's reign as the president of Syria has come to an end on the 8th of December 2024. Assad has now been granted asylum by Moscow, his longest ally. Despite ruling the country in a decade-long civil war, Assad had managed to keep power for 24 years with support from Russia and Iran. So what went down in the past week that Assad had to relinquish power? Well, Assad's fall has been credited to mainly two reasons. One, the charge by rebels led by Hayat Tehrir al-Sham and their capture of Aleppo, Syria's second biggest city, 11 days before Assad's fall. Second reason, the timing that the, and the fact that both Assad's key allies, Russia and Iran, were fighting their own wars in Russia and Ukraine, with a ceasefire coming into force in Lebanon on the 27th of November. Hezbollah licked its wounds and refused to fight Assad's war with rebels. Elsewhere in South Korea, a travel ban has been imposed on South Korean President Yoon after he imposed a sudden martial law on the 3rd of December 2024. Although the martial law was lifted after 190 legislators who had arrived at the National Assembly unanimously passed a motion to lift the martial law. It's important to note that the martial law was imposed in South Korea after 44 long years when General Chun Do Hwan carried out a coup and forced the cabinet to extend martial law. This came after the assassination of President Park Chung Hee by leader of the Korean Central Intelligence Agency. President Yoon had also justified his martial law accusing his domestic opponents of plotting a rebellion and that he was protecting the constitution from pro-North Korean forces. So in the past week, we witnessed a government collapse in South Korea and a sovereign collapse in Syria and now a failed state too. About three months ago, a constitutional crisis emerged in Bangladesh after its elected PM, Sheikh Hasina, resigned and fled the country. This was due to a two-year-long protest reportedly led by student organizations who had stormed a residence. It's known that Sheikh Hasina had blamed the United States for destabilizing her government. Three days later, an interim government was formed, unsurprisingly led by Mohammed Yunus, who was jailed by Sheikh Hasina. Yunus had gained strong support from Joe Biden and Bill Clinton, raising questions on the sudden government collapse in Bangladesh. Well, that makes it three past countries in the past three months who have faced government collapses, state collapses and constitutional crises. Adding to this, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced a shock resignation on the 14th of August, bowing out of the LDP elections. He had explained his move as a chance for the party to reset public distrust after the slush fund scandal, raising questions on his political fundraising. In Romania too, the Constitutional Court has annulled the first round of the presidential elections and ordered a complete restart. Georgescu, a far-right candidate with pro-Russian sympathies, outperformed opinion polling to win the first round on the 24th of November. He was due to face Elena Lasconi of the Liberal Pro-European Save Romania Union in Sunday's runoff. The court ruling, though, said the electoral process was subject to manipulation of voters, votes and the distortion of equal opportunities amongst electoral competitors. Through the non-transparent and unlawful use of digital technologies and artificial intelligence during the electoral process. So why is it then that so many states have suddenly been plunged into a crisis? Is it due to the prolonged wars in Russia and Ukraine? Does the change of power in the U.S. have anything to do with it? Well, or is there something more? Joining us at this point, Suresh Kumar Goel, former diplomat. We 